I buy the first green day. This is a pattern that I talk about a lot, FGD, first green day. When there's a news, when there's a catalyst, when there's a breakout, when there's volume. Never, never try and anticipate. You want to react, okay? But that's yeah. tough. Everybody wants to be first. It's fun yeah. to like know the story when no one else does. You go to like your your friends. You're like, yo, I got a story. I got something cool. And then when it starts spiking, you text like, I, people show me group texts. Like, <laughs> I told you it would spike, and I told you about this not two weeks ago. Again, this is the human condition. We want to be first. We want to cheer me. You have to try to ignore that. Successful trading is very counterintuitive. You want to buy a stock that the market has already confirmed yes. in play that's already spiking because the beautiful thing, and I don't want anyone to go out there and tell people to like penny stocks. We like the hate that's out there because that creates opportunity because a lot of people refuse to look at these penny stocks on the first or second or third day that they're spiking. So a lot of people who hate this niche and hate everything to do with penny stocks, they start buying these stocks on day five, day seven, day 10 of a run-up after they're like, oh, okay, it's going up. I feel guilty missing it. They're not meticulous. They don't care about day one. I buy first green day. This is a pattern that I talk about a lot, FGD, first green day. When there's news, when there's a catalyst, when there's a breakout, when there's volume, because a lot of people, slower people who hate on penny stocks will see it later. They will not see it on the first green day. As opposed to everywhere else in finance where frankly there's a lot more money, a lot more popularity in other niches, if there is a big move, it's usually all priced in on the first day. It's not an inefficient market. So penny stocks are very inefficient. We've seen some stocks uh, you know, that spike on day six or day eight after the news, but when some hedge fund has seen it or some mainstream uh, news media has written about it. So you have that time. You don't have to be by your computer or smartphone every single second like you know some of these Bitcoin traders. I don't, Bitcoin trades 24 seven. I don't know when you're gonna sleep. It doesn't make sense to me. Why would you want that? I don't care how rich you get off Bitcoin. You're just never gonna sleep. So that first green day pattern you talk about, that's, that's attractive to a lot of people. So explain that chart pattern to me. I mean, when I hear first green day, this is a long term down trending chart. I mean, for years, and it's sitting at the lows, and then you know, typically below a dollar, and then you're looking for that contract win, that press release, or whatever, and then that spike in volume. Yeah, right? again, most penny stocks fail. Let's just be straight up front with that. And it's important that we talk about that because you know that they're probably gonna fail in the future, even if they're spiking in the short term. But what causes a spike? Some kind of news catalyst, a big new product, a big new investment, good earnings, you know, a, a little ray of hope, right? Like, have you ever seen the, uh, the movie The Perfect Storm? Raise your hand if you've seen The Perfect Storm. Mark Wahlberg, George Flutie, good movie. There's one scene towards the end, before they all die, spoiler, right? <laughs> There's one scene where they see some sunlight. It's okay. It's, it's old. You should have seen it's, it already. It's 20 years old. I mean, if you haven't seen it right now, you're not going to see it. You should watch it. It's good research because they're fighting. They're trying to save themselves. It's like, you know, the, the ship actually, it's a real ship. They died, but we don't really know what happened. But in the movie, there's one glimmer of hope and they see some sunshine and they're like, we're going to make it. And then the sunshine closes up and then they all die. So that's kind of like what penny stock spikes are like. It's like a glimmer of hope and it's like, we're going to be the penny stock that makes it. And it lasts a few hours or days before eventually they all die. So what would you <laughs> No, you gotta be real about it. Like that's it. We're we're trading on that glimmer of hope. And even though we laugh about it, we're like, haha, we know how it is. 99.9% .9 of people don't know that's just a glimmer of hope. They think that's the beginning of something amazing. And then, you know, penny stocks die for all different reasons. But I, if you follow me on Twitter, I fight people where I'm like, I know your company's gonna fail. And they're like, but the technology. I'm like, I know your company's gonna fail. And they're like, but the CEO. And I said, I know your company's not gonna fail. And they won't listen. And six months later, they're like, I should have listened. And this has happened. I mean, literally hundreds of times. It's not that I'm that smart. I just know statistics. I know history. That's why I want you guys to study. I have 6,000 video lessons showing all of these failures. It's not a surprise anymore. It's not like this isn't the sixth sense with a surprise ending. This is, everyone's going to die. This is Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so, so you've sold me on, on my uh, intro question. Now, you're going to get this a lot at these training conferences, which it's great to get exposure to everything. but. You'll, you'll get the response, well, there's volatility in high price stocks too. I can trade options you know, and, and get that volatility. So why do you think that low price slash penny stocks are better than trading options on 
you know, Netflix going into her. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've looked at the other niches. I haven't seen anyone with, you know, ridiculous, several consistent ridiculous gains in track records like our top students. Top student has turned 1500 into eight plus million dollars. Tim Grittani, you can see every one of his trades. Um, you know, my first hater, Michael Good, has now made over two million. He actually wrote a blog post that said, Timothy Sykes is full of BS. Um, I just don't see these kinds of gains in other niches when you start with a small consistent. amount. Consistent gains. I mean, I, I have dozens of examples of this kind of stuff. Um, so maybe, you know, I'm not going to rip on other niches, but for me, when we know the ending of a movie or the ending of a stock, like, you can kind of see what's going to happen. With these other companies, I don't know if Netflix is going to have good earnings or bad earnings, or maybe they have good earnings, but the good earnings are priced in, so it's a bad reaction. Um, there's so many different... Um, just indicators with everything else. Penny stocks, it's very simple. You do not have to be that smart. I'm not that smart, I'm not that good at math. Everyone keeps talking about algorithmic trading. I have to like think, how do I spell algorithm in my head? Like, I don't know why, I always think there's a why in it. I know there's no why, but I think that it is. I'm not that smart and I have to recognize my limitations. So I'm in this niche full of you know, morons and mental midgets in penny stocks because frankly, there's not as much money. This is another thing. If everyone trades penny stocks, like, oh, it's so amazing, it's so easy. No, it's not. My top student has made roughly a little over a million dollars a year for the eight plus years that he's been in. And he's like one of the best penny stock traders. You can make a million dollars in a day or in an hour in some of these other niches, but because there's not as much money, you don't have as many smart people. So again, it, it's very much based on psychology of idiots. And yeah. that's easy to predict. So, so back if to you me. know, raise your hand if you guys know any idiots. <laughs> Like just personally, right? So think about that dumb person. Think about how they think, and then multiply them by like a thousand people. And add greed. People. And add greed. What? Yeah. And add greed. greed. Add, well, how does an idiot? Add, 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 add an idiot. So you guys can do yeah. a little test at home. Like put a little twenty-dollar bill on the floor. Invite the idiot over and see what happens. And that's like a a, a, a test of how these people are going to trade penny stocks. I don't mean to be mean. I'm just serious. Like there are so many idiots trading penny stocks, and I'm so grateful for every last one of them. I never <laughs> want them to change. Like I always, if you see me on Twitter, I always end the argument. I'm like, please have lots of kids. We want more people <laughs> thinking like you. Or I might say, like, don't blame yourself. It's not your fault that you're this way. It's your parents, your teachers. Never blame yourself. One or the other. But I don't want them to change. We need those idiots. They keep happening. You know the phrase, there's a sucker born every minute. Like, they all go to penny stocks. Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I want to share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge, and become my next millionaire student.